All right, so everybody knows that the holidays are bittersweet times for most people because on the one hand, they're sweet because they give us some, usually with our jobs, some time off. They allow us an excuse to get together with friends and family and to maybe kind of hopefully sort of let our hair down and so on and so forth, right? And of course, if you celebrate, you know, Christmas or you celebrate Hanukkah um, or something that coincides with the, the December period, then, you know, has religious meaning for you as well, perhaps, or spiritual meaning. But everybody knows that there's a bittersweet quality to it, and that the bitter quality that is there as well for a lot of people is that the holidays can also bring up for people issues that they have in their relationships, particularly, you know, if uh, if there's loneliness because of a recent divorce or, or maybe a divorce way back in someone's history and they still haven't gotten over. If there's, if someone doesn't feel like they have much of a network of friends or family, or if they're estranged from friends or family, um, or if they've, they've lost friends or family, then it can have that kind of bitter quality. And then also, you know, being around family, those of us who are able to do that for the holidays, it also brings up issues, as everybody knows, it can bring up issues that we have with our family, even people that we love, even people that we're hanging out with voluntarily, <laughs> right? It depends on the meaning of the word voluntary, right? It's kind of like Bill Clinton would say, what's, uh, it depends on the meaning of, the, of what the word is, is. But anyway, coercive control, you know, it is the reason why I have to hang out with my family over the holidays is because I'm coercively controlled into doing it. No, that's, that's just a joke, sort of. Anyways, uh, yeah. So here's the thing that, here's the inter one of the interesting things that, that has come up for me recently. I talk to people, as you may know, um, I offer this option on my Patreon memberships where if you pay a little more and you pay $29, then you can talk to me for 29 minutes. And it's kind of a gimmick, 29 minutes, you know, $29, ha ha ha. But basically I'll talk to you for half an hour, right? And some people, like I've said before, some people just want to chat and some people have like, you know, actual like specific issues that they want to talk about, uh, you know, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not a therapist. I've just read a lot and basically I'm like talking to a friend, I guess. <laughs> but I talked to someone in the last few weeks and I was thinking about this today. Be, uh, it is someone who this person had an abusive mother and it sounds like to me a mother who was highly narcissistic but also very volatile sounds like borderline personality disorder actually she sounds a lot like amber heard and this guy grew up with this amber heard like mother and it seems like he was in denial about it when he was growing up uh, because for various reasons but he didn't want to see or accept the fact that his mother um, had problems. And in fact, his mother was always telling him that his father was the problem. Sound familiar? And so in fact, he grew up with this feeling that his dad was the problem, perhaps, even though he didn't see that himself, right? So much gaslighting. Well, anyway, here's the point. Um, he, he has gotten to the point now in his life where he has finally realized, he and his, and his brother or sister have realized the degree to which the mother was the problem growing up and the degree to which the mother is is ill is mentally ill and has a and is deeply narcissistic and is even you know volatile and the degree to which she really mistreated them in a lot of ways and lied to them a lot and even tried to estrange them from their father so you know he's he's got a lot to that, to be upset about and he's got a lot that he is only now in middle age starting to process and starting to come to terms with. Now, as a result of that, predictably, he has a lot of anger at his mother that he was never able to express at the time, either when he was growing up or even in early adulthood, because first of all, he had been so gaslit growing up that he, he was in denial, wasn't even seeing that the mother was the problem and the extent to which he had been psychologically uh, abused by the mother and uh, and even I think physically abused at times and um, and the way that you know that his relationship with his father had been poisoned by the mother and and other things that went on terrible things that she she did and and so anyway so he's just now starting to come to terms with this and he has predictably he has anger and he has and he wants to he feels the need to confront this woman 
and to to deal with this stuff by at least in part confronting her and also this woman you know she has not she has mellowed a bit in older age but she is still apparently the same deeply narcissistic manipulative problematic personality that she was when he was growing up and so he's still having to deal even in the present with her uh, gaslighting and manipulation and antagonism it's just that he's older and she as these types often do has mellowed a bit in older age as the reality of life is finally you know hit her in the face it's harder to manipulate people when you're you know an elderly woman than when you're when you're not right and so here's the issue that he has, and I can totally relate to this, and I bet that a number of you can as well. This is a this is a this is a problem that is very common, especially you know in cases where there was a lot of abuse or manipulation or gaslighting growing up, and where a parent had a personality disorder or was abusive or whatever, right? He is angry at her. He feels the need to confront her. And also, he's continuing to be antagonized by her continuing problematic behavior in the present. And yet, she is this frail old woman. She is, uh, I'm not going to, I don't say her age exactly, but she is what we would consider very elderly. She is still in decent health, but she's very elderly and very frail. And of course, she likes to remind everyone that she's very elderly and very frail. You know, guilt is apparently a big thing with her, generating guilt in other people. And he does not feel like, now that she is at the end of her life, that it is ethical for him to um, to criticize her or to tell her what he feels or to confront her about this stuff or to call bullshit on her behavior. And this is a pickle that a lot of people find themselves in. Uh, because they feel like the object, the rightful object of their anger, the parent from years ago, the parent who was actually scary, who was actually powerful, you know, who was alluring or captivating or was manipulative, right? Uh, the parent from the past who like looms over us like a shadow, right? People want to confront that, but they can't because that window of opportunity is gone and time has moved on and now this person this parent has become this elderly pathetic pitiful you know I'm sorry no no insult to people who are aging I'll be there soon right we all will but they are no longer a, a kind of what we would feel an appropriate object for their anger right for that kind of anger and yet that anger is there and it's just it should have somewhere to go maybe even hurting the person right to not be able to express that so that is the pickle. And I found myself in a similar situation. I've talked about it before. He's dead now. My dad uh, was just a textbook case of narcissistic personality disorder. He did have a deeply sadistic streak. Um, I, I didn't grow up with, uh, personally, with physical abuse, a lot of psychological abuse. And when I say sadistic, I mean, I, I don't want to get into it, but there were things that, you know, I saw and everything. Anyway, my point is that I have a, a lot of anger. I have had a lot of anger at him over the years and a real desire to confront him. But my dad, you know, he died of Alzheimer's like a year or so ago. And I would say the last 20 years of his life, looking back on it, he was in some form of dementia. It didn't become acute or noticeable until the last, I'd say, 10 years. But Anyway, my point is that by the time I actually, I always knew there was something wrong with him, and as I, and even into my teens, I knew that he was a messed up guy and everything, but I didn't really confront, like, what had really happened, or my anger, or my feelings, and I never confronted him. Never confronted him. And because, because I felt like once I finally had gotten ready to do that, and finally ready to deal with it, that now he was this you know, demented, frail old man. And one of the things that happened with his dementia is that he became nicer. He became a lot nicer. And this does happen with some people. So it was like the person that I, I felt justified in criticizing or confronting or dealing with, that person was gone. And now it would be like unethical and unkind of me to deal with this frail old man here. Now, what I want to say, and I'll talk about this more extensively later on my channel. And if you're enjoying this conversation, I invite you to check out my psychology and philosophy and spirituality playlist. Uh, I talk about my life in there too, but uh, it's a whole playlist where I cover all kinds of topics and you'll really like it. So check that out. I'm going to put the link below, but and I'll talk about this more later, but I just want to say this though. I never solved 
this problem because he died and I didn't see him in the last year of his life and I didn't go to his funeral, not really out of protest, but I just didn't see the point. And um, so I never dealt really with this. I never figured out how to deal with it. And I never did confront him really or anything like that, right? But I will say this. There is such a thing in life, call it karma, call it the law of uh, action and reaction or the law of consequences but there is something in life to the idea that we do reap what we sow and that when we do things that are wrong that we can expect uh, that that at some point later we can expect that that we will likely see some negative consequences from that and I say that because most look with most things in life when you do something wrong or you do something unwise or unethical or whatever you know sometimes you see the bad results of that immediately you know like if you're mean to someone and then they react negatively toward you right or they stop being your friend or whatever or you know you, that consequence is maybe kind of immediate or like um if you do something wrong, illegal, and you get caught by the cops, you know, that consequence is immediate. Or if you're being, you know, you cheat on your girlfriend or your boyfriend, they break up with you, that consequence is immediate, right? But sometimes in life, often in life, there are things where the, the action takes place and then the consequences of that may not become fully apparent or may not fully arise until years or even decades down the road. However, the fact that those consequences were delayed does not negate the fact that they are still consequences of a, a valid consequences of an earlier behavior. And so what I'm trying to say is this. It is easy to look at an elderly man or woman, particularly if they are your parent. And so let's say, though, it's easy to look at an abusive a formerly abusive parent who is now an elderly man or woman and to say well I can't confront them or I can't bring up things from the past or whatever because look at them they're pitiful they're older elderly that I believe misses the point in some ways that it is it is not necessarily it might be it might be kind of irrelevant I guess is what I'm saying and I'm still thinking about this you know as I go along and maybe I'll have more thoughts on it later and I'd love to get your comments I'm not sure that it's entirely relevant what state someone is in in the present because there are there is a car there's karma and there is a law of action and reaction and a law of consequences and I guess what I'm saying is that when that parent decades ago perhaps was being abusive they were committing acts in that abusiveness that have, or in that bad parenting or whatever you want to call it, that have consequences built into them, even if those consequences will not be felt until decades later. So what I'm trying to say is that need, if you had an abusive parent or a parent did some bad things or whatever, and really dropped the ball with their parenting and you want to confront them, that need that you have is a is a kind of a natural consequence and even a kind of a moral, perhaps an ethical consequence to the behavior that they thought they got away with in the past. Because sometimes life lets you get away with behavior just by the nature of how things are set up, right? The, the child is in a vulnerable position relative to the parent. The child cannot fight back. The child cannot reason with the parent. The child is trapped. The child is, for all intents and purposes, a prisoner to the parents and to the whims of the parent and the caprices of the parent. And yes, the personality disorders of the parent. Now, this can be a good thing if the parent is a good parent and protective and helpful and all of that. But when that's not the case, then it's a deeply problematic situation. And so what I'm trying to say is that even though it may feel like wrong to confront a parent when they're older you have to remember that in a way that is the chickens coming home to roost and it's never fun when the chickens come home to roost and it's never pleasant and it's not pleasant for anyone nor should it be and yet there is a kind of still a sort of logic to the chickens coming home to roost and so 
I am not sure that I don't think that it is wrong to confront a parent. Now, do you, you can't, you don't want to hurt your parents, you know, or attack them when you don't want to, you know, be as rough as you, I'm sorry, or verbally even, you know, you don't, you're not, you shouldn't be trying to like sadistically cause, you know, some kind of even emotional pain. But there is definitely something to be said for expressing how someone has hurt you and that it is unacceptable and that you wish they wouldn't have done it and that you would like an apology or something like these types of things are okay even if you don't get the response you want right and so that's one thing that I would say and I just want to bring up something else you know in our society today whenever uh, we find that elderly people have committed crimes in their youth particularly, you know, like very heinous crimes, you know, like, like there are cases where you've had like serial killers who maybe were not detected because of DNA or whatever until they're very elderly. The law does not say, and society does not say, well, you know, you did these really terrible things, but you're really old and pitiful now, so we're just going to let that go. We don't want to spoil your final years or make things rougher on you or whatever. No, the law says, um, okay, enjoy your final years in prison. <laughs> And I'm not arguing for, you know, I mean, I think our prisons are terrible and I think we've got a lot of issues with our criminal justice system. That's not the point I'm making. I'm just saying that some people are trapped under such a feeling of like obligation, emotional obligation to their parents that they don't see that they actually have a right to stand up to that parent or to even make it known uh, to that parent how that parent screwed up and that maybe some amends need to be made or, or some recognition of something or whatever, right? And I don't think that need is, a, is, is incorrect or is wrong or unethical. I think there are better and worse and proper and proper or good and perhaps bad ways of expressing it. But I don't think it is something that automatically ethically has to be turned away from. Right? And uh, again, people get, parents get away with a lot of stuff when children can't speak up for themselves. And one of the things about old age, and everyone who's got a brain knows this, is that one of the, the, the difficult aspects of old age is coming to the end of your life and having to come to terms with the damage that you have done. And we hope when we get to the end of our lives that we won't have a lot of damage to account for either to ourselves or to God or to those people that we have harmed. And yet, nevertheless, there are some people like Amber Heard and others who've done a hell of a lot of damage and they should expect to account for it in some way, I think. All right. So that was not the most cheerful holiday message, but it's something that I was thinking about, wanted to tell you. And again, if you like this, check out my other videos, the playlist below. And as always, if you got something out of this or any of my videos, I appreciate tips. Uh, PayPal, Patreon links are below. And yeah, happy holidays. I'm going to have more coming out soon. Bye-bye.